So this chapter is about geostatistical data. Um, this is a very complicated chapter. Um, what should I say about it? We learn about geostatistic and the correspondence between two ideas of geostatistic, which is the biogram and the um, covariance. And then we will see like how we can use um, some covariance function and some approximation uh, to convert them uh, into, uh, to move from uh, uh, a continuous model from Gaussian uh, random field to um, a model I do not remember, but that's a discrete model that we used mesh. We'll see it later in the stochastic partial differential equation approach. And then we'll see how we can implement what we have seen into INLA. And uh, some parts I will say are more transparent than others. So we'll progress with it, I guess. So just statistic. We remember like what we have seen before was RL data, which was discrete data. That's mean like we can divide the space into discrete blocks. That's we, usually we can call polygons. Uh, here we'll study a continuous phenomenon, for example, the density of mosquitoes. I assume there are more than one. But the process is recorded at specific location. For example, the mosquitoes are, have been caught in some trap in the place in let's call it the domain like the 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 space that we are studying so we have a special phenomenon that's called z that's a special variable that's uh we have observation of this variable at bion set locations that's called s all of them are, are into domain that's uh also are encompassed into some dimension usually two but can be more so this can be assumed to be like a Gaussian random field. I will give you the definition. Like a Gaussian random field is a collection of random variable. So all of the uh, special variable where the observation occur in a continuous domain. So we are in the same idea that's a geostatistic, but where, oh, you can see my screen now? You couldn't see? I just had like a message like saying, I like, can see it now. Okay. Uh, uh, and we have a finite uh, collection of random variable. Here, usually the finite collection into our approach is latitude and longitude. That's why we will see like later we have a dimension of two. But we can assume like it can be like three sometimes. And in, if you add, for example, time, or if you add like, for example, uh, alti um, altitude. Just to, because like some book will also use other terminology, usually a random process is also sometimes called a stochastic process, which basically means like it's something that it's moving. So by definition, it cannot be constant, but just later we'll see like, well, even if it cannot be constant, we'll still manage some way from it to be stationary. It's kind of like some constant and you have various kind of stationary. The first one is like the strictly strong stationary. The strictly and strong are both used. There's a lot of terminology and jargon in these chapters. And I'm not sure, like uh, in some other books, it can be different. So even if you learn the terminology, like just keep in mind, like try to remember the concept I feel behind them. So when something is called strong stationary, it's basically like meaning like if you shift in location, you will not result any change in the distribution of the random variable. The easiest way to feel that, to understand that, if, if you check in one dimension, if you put like a white noise, you know, white noise are like stuff like varying, but the, ran the randomness are equal everywhere. So a good example of something that is strong, uh, strictly strong stationary uh, process uh, is a white noise. Uh, most likely what we will use is the weak stationary or sometimes called second under stationary. Uh, that's mean that will be like the mean are constant over the domain. So every location can have other like variable, but if you plot the mean over the domain, it will be flat. It should be the same. And usually the covariance depend only on the difference between location H. So this is another, um, and we will see like um, um, 
I will, so this is the, what does it means. So the covariance will equal the covariance of the spatial um, process at one point and another point of distance h will be equal to c and c is a covariance function. We'll see some example of covariance function later, uh, but that's what uh, it implies. I will go straight into define uh, isotropy and anisotropy. I think I, I speak about it a bit later, but oh, I have like, I felt like it. But uh, so H, this is the distance. Sometimes you can call it the lag also. Uh, it can, uh, it's usually at first, you can assume it's a vector. And a vector is defined by two stuff. It's defined by a direction and a, and a, a length or a power. Here, to make things simpler, we'll assume like the direction does not matter, which is uh, what we mean by isotropy. So usually it's not true. Usually like, for example, you can have a process that's going to a direction more than in one other. You can see that, for example, uh, if you have a, run, a, a stochastic process on the mountain, let's say like it's, it's on the field of the mountain, you will have an effect of the slope. So you will have the effect of the mountain on all the domain. So on the two dimension, but then the slope will, in, will, will, will change it. So one way like usually it's corrected in geostatistics is like you will define more than one biogram for the two direction. But the book does not cover that now. Maybe it will cover later. So currently, we'll put ourselves in the ID of isotropy, not anisotropy, which means like the direction of edge do not matter. So we just care about the power of the vector of the distances. So it simplifies this stuff. OK. Uh, usually, like we also use the intrinsic stationary, which means like the variance between two locations are only on the distant edge and not their location. This is a bit more tricky, but it's kind of related. It means that sometimes the location matters, uh, and uh, you could have very low location. Place where stuff are will change, uh, the covariance will change related to this place. Here, we will not do that. That means like we just care about the distances. And this is what allows us to also simplify that. We'll see that later. Here, you see like we just care of distances. And we do not care like, for example, we just, because we just care of distances, we can only walk in one dimension. And this is why also like when you walk in time, usually you are like in these cases because we just have one dimension. Uh, so it's simplified when you walk in time. You do not, we do not, uh, but time in one dimension usually. Okay, so this is it. This is the first idea. Like, no, we are trying. You can, you can understand uh, how the variable is expressed by drawing the cover, uh, the um, the covariant function between every location, and this covariant function will be expressed by the the distances. Okay. Now we'll see more like what we call like in just a biogram, which is just basically like variance between a location and another location. Remember, anyway, we are in intrinsic stationary, so we just care about um, we just care about age. Uh, we can. This is like just a quick remembering. Like this is the definition of the variance. Uh, we just for one um, one one character. This is the uh, expectation of x minus the expectation of x squared. Like you have two definitions, but this is one of them. So we can like replace this variance uh, definition uh, with this one and, and divide it. So bear with me, it's a bit boring. So the x here is basically like the s, uh, the, the special um, z, 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 like that we said in English, z. Uh, the s plus h uh, minus s minus uh, z the s. So I just replace uh, this with this. And uh, the biogram is also co called a like duet, like because like this was long to write. <laughs> I use it also like this as a notation, which is to gamma, which is the definition of a bio. Uh, uh, this is a biogram, and we'll see later why we, a semi biogram is just the gamma. Uh, this is the same. This is just like this is to gamma just like because like it, it can be long. So I replace it uh, my uh, 
my variance here, like the x minus uh, the expectation of x here, and then I develop it. So this is just like so this on uh no, yeah, I just replace it. And then here um I reorganize it. So you know, so we have s plus h uh, variable and uh, z s variable with a special process. So I'll go organize every uh s plus h together. You see, like you have the s plus h minus the expectation of s plus h, still of the special random, uh, just simplify myself, minus the the part which is uh just the uh z location the s location sorry and then i use like uh i do not know like how you call that in english but like i just developed it it's like so it's you know in in french uh we call it identity remarkable or remarkable identity you know when you have like uh a minus b square it's a square plus b square minus two a b like I can write it in the chat. Maybe it will make more sense. Like, uh, let me see where the chat is. You know, uh, where's the chat? Well, you 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 got it. Do you remember that? Do I need to write it? This is like uh, basic. So this is what I have done. So the first term I have put it on the square. See, the square is here. The second term square, and then the minus two ab, which is the first term and the second term. Like this is like the first term, remember the S plus H minus the second term. Like do it slowly and you will see if I do not have made mistake into the parentheses, it should be good. <laughs> no, no, that, that's, 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 fine. Fine. that's fine. It just says, um, just has, uh, it's a, a, a binomial. Yeah, that's huh? it. Yeah, that's simple that's binomial uh, stuff. Well, yeah. Uh, and uh, this is because it's a binomial. Yeah. So there is an S and an H. So you need to then arrive to obtain the covariance to two times the no, covariance. The two times is just because like I have like two terms that's uh, R square. So I have like, uh, you we can, yeah. I, this is why it's a binomial. Yeah, you need to have two times like, because it's, yeah, you have two terms. In square, so two terms. I mean, you, I mean, because you have two terms, you you don't have just variance. Yes, that's it. The variance of the first two, the first, the variance of the second, and then two times the covariance. Yeah, this is why, like, I translated at two covariance here. Yeah, yeah. See, like, uh, so this term, like, uh, the first term, is the, uh, it's the, yeah. In fact, it's the variance of uh of it and the second term is just the variance of the s plus h and the first second term is just the variance of uh, s and because if we are in a in intrinsic term they are similar in intrinsic seminary we can simplify them they're, they're both equal and here because like we have like uh and here we have the covariance like you said like the s term and the S plus H term. That's it. Uh, so we can write them as a covariance, uh, a covariant function of H, which is what we have done. Like this is just like, in fact, the same stuff that we have here. And here, like uh, this is the covariance. And so we have like two uh, covariants. Uh, that's what we call like sometimes we call it the nuggets. Also, this is the same idea. This is the basic. Um, uh, variation, basic special variation. And so we just simplify it. So this is the, the biogram equal, equal two times the, the nuggets and two times minus two times the, the covariance function. So what, and so this leads us like to the biogram equal just the nugget minus the covariance. Okay. The, the, the C uh, uh, a variable uh, the C element is is the covariance. It's a covariance function, oh, okay. not the not the curve. It's a it's a covariance function undefined. Okay. We we'll need to define that better. Just a covariance. Okay. Yeah, just a covariance, but it will need like to be defined in the modeling letters. Okay. But why are we doing that? It's just like it shows the relationship between what we call a biogram. 
or semi-variogram and a covariance. They are close. I mean, you can sometimes you will read like the covariance equal the, the seal minus the biogram. Because like the you can basically say like a covariance is the reverse of a biogram. Like you can um you can like uh, the covariance with like let let's see here here. So this is a covariance function. This is the exponential one. And we can, uh, as you see, like the shape, it's basically kind of the reverse of this one. Is one minus this one. It's not exactly the same, but we can you can you can assume it. Uh, you can just simplify it because like uh, this. Uh, so this is the seal, like the place where like um, the sometimes it's called the plateau. <laughs> in French we call it plateau, but in English it's called the seal. Uh, it's it's basically like if you do the seal minus uh, uh, the the biogram, you will get the covariance function. But because the seal usually does not exist, I mean it. You know. It's supposed uh, in the covariance function you cannot go to zero. It's 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 impossible by definition. But here in the biogram you can still increase. You know it's 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 possible to to still increase. So this is like some difference between them. Like uh, they are not exactly like reverse. One like cannot go to zero and the others like can improve the, all the time. Does it make sense? Let's let's go a bit like so here. Usually, what we calculate, I I just change it a bit like from the book. The book just use the two here. It's twice the empirical bio. It's the empirical biogram. The more common way of writing it is a semi biogram. Where so the two here, did you see it like these two? It can be here. This is the same, right? You you just if as are the two easier, or you divide those up, right? Is that the it's on the left end, or you can put it on the right end by putting it as the denominator. You can divide by two. This is the same idea. So and we, we do like basically the same. So it's just like the distances S E and S G is basically like the distances between every places. If you simplify it and say like every point is at the same distances, H, it's basically like the same as saying like S plus H minus S. Just like it's it's the collection of distance between points, and we generalize it here. And it's square because, like, uh, you want uh, it's mostly because you want to uh, have it positive, and then you take care of it by dividing by the numbers of a couple of points you have twice. Because if you want the biogram, so that's it. The isotropy and isotropy I've explained, but like I fell here. Uh, on my editing. So this is what we call a biogram. And the biogram usually have a small here effect, which is called the nugget, which is the special variance uh, that you cannot get around it. Usually some people call it like, you know, the measure error. Or if you have points, like let's say you, you only have points that are 10 meters away, you cannot predict what happened inside of the 10 meters. So that's why you have the nuggets. Historically, it was because like uh, people were this was developed when people were trying to find gold, and sometimes you know you have small effect in the ground that's uh, you found like a bean. I don't know what you call like you know like uh, in English the word like to describe like when you have a ge geological form where you have gold inside of it or a geological form when you have like some structure on it, and. Uh, Sometimes you have a small variation into it that you cannot predict. And inside of it, you can have nugget of gold. This is why it came from. But, uh, so, but you can call it also the spatial variance sometimes. So the range is like the, the uh, I define it also a bit later. Uh, so here I, I added the to do because like I didn't, uh, I could have drawn it with R, but I was too lazy. It was a lot of work, so I haven't done it. Uh, but you can definitely like create this function and, and calculate it. So the range is basically the time where we still have, uh, let's say, a, co uh, a relation, a, a special relation. So yeah, it's strong. And farther we go away, 
less the relationship in, in time exists, in space exists, sorry. So when we are arrive here, uh, it's basically mean we do not have, if like, let's say like I have a point D1 and point D2, and if they are outside of the range, it's basically mean we can basically say that they are independent. We do not have co uh, correlation or covariance between them. That's just like the variance of the field. Okay? So this is also one way to check uh, if you could say they are independent. Uh, so to modelize that, usually we pick a distance. Uh, and remember, the covariance is just the variance multiply the correlation. Like I have that, like, this is, this is just, uh, yeah. The co I mean, usually, you know more, like usually the, the correlation is equal to covariance divided by the variance. So if you flip it, it's go that way. Uh, so if we want to define um, a, co a covariance function, we can define it as a variance time a correlation function. This is just the variance. And obviously, we need to check that D is always positive because variance can, can only be positive. If you want like the P uh, row of D, if it's, it's bring you something negative, you will fail because it, it's not possible. Variance can only pos be positive. P indeed is a correlation between uh, uh, row D, sorry, is a correlation function. When row D, uh, and when rho D is equal to zero, it's called a variance. That's mean like we're just in this situation. This is the minimum distance when random observation are said to be independent. We are here. Uh, this is very hard to get, in fact, because like, you know, like this seal, it can alway, always improve the bit, you know, always, always a bit. So a lot of time uh, we are using effective range. It's not in the book, I'm just telling you that. <laughs> I mean, it's in the book, but it's not said uh, as effective brand. Uh, here we are using usually a very low amount of correlation. Usually it's 0 0.05. So, you know, here it's still increasing a bit. So you still could have like a bit of it, but uh, we said like it's, when it's only increased that bit, uh, we said it's, it's down. And it, she is using in the book another one. She's doing 0.1, twice the what it's used usually. Okay, no question uh, without that. So there's a lot of covariant function. Uh, the exponential one uh, is probably the easiest one to understand. So the covariance will be equal like the variance time and exponential minus rate, k is the rate, uh, with the absolute value of the difference between two points at certain distance. So here I have like show how you can do that. I'm sure Federica, you, you, you can give us like a, a, a good tidy version of it. I was lazy, so I have just do like a, a base plot version. But yeah, I have just drew like, you know, uh, a sequence from usually like you want something like that's go from zero to one. I define the functions that's go sigma, which is my variance, k, okay, which is like my rates. Uh, and h, which is the distance. Uh, I was lazy because I didn't want to compute this uh, matrices of distances, so I just put like. But you could you could do that. So you just take sigma squared times the expanse minus k. Oh, Ferrick, are you coming? And so, are you here? I see. We see your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm duplicating myself because I'm switching on my mobile and then okay. I'm leaving here and go back here. So that's it. So, and then like I have, I have reproduced the same plot that she has down. So more you increase the, um, uh, less the rate is, less the covariance decrease, and more the covariance. I mean, this is like for slow rate and the slow rate gives you slow, 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 the covariance decrease slowly. And if you do uh, like a strong red, like you basically have a very, uh, well, you are more than in exponential case. Then this is like the matter models, which I haven't uh, um, played a lot with. 
So it is like you basically like have like the <clears throat> uh, the, the the variance divided by two exponential like v. I think this is the smoothness if I'm correct. I would have to check that uh, times the gamma function. The gamma function is just uh, n minus one factorial. So let's say if you have three, gamma function will return two. If you have four, it will return six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I do not know why they use this notation. And then it will be like the still the rate multiply k, which is the uh, um, k v. It's his effective range. Here it's defined as the square root of a divided by the smoothness. So it's k. Uh, and you basically like we'll set it later, but it's basically like um, a way to say like okay, we need to stop at uh, because it's never. And here she defined it for uh, the effective range to be the, the correlation to be equal to 0.1. And yeah, some example. I uh, I was to to do like so. There is the in lab package. There is some things that do it, but I haven't time to uh, to do it and replicate the example. Okay. No, I haven't understand the stochastic partial differential equation and their uh, uh, approach. What I do not, I do not have understand, but I understand like we are trying to move, uh, we are using a Martian covariance matrix and it can be expressed as a solution to predict the variable of interest. When you are using like this Gaussian random field, the Martian covariance matrix ensure you that you are, you can, uh, you can, you can be back on your feet. The pattern of uh, the parameters of the Martian covariance and the special uh, stochastic partial differential equation are coupled. That's mean like it simplify them. Like it will lim lime, uh, you will not have parameter for the matter and covariance and parameter for the partial differential equation approach. They are the same and you can basically relate to each other. And we can approximate the stochastic partial differential equation with a finite element that divide instead of having like you know, uh, a continuous variable, we can divide it by a discrete variable, which make it easier to integrate. Uh, and by doing that, we're using like non-intersect, uh, to divide that, uh, we are using non-intersecting triangle. So use like a Dolomé uh, triangulation transformation. Then bring us to a mesh uh, with n nodes and n basic function, and basis function. So I uh, will explain that a bit later. So basically what you are saying is like, let's say like you have like, uh, you will drill, we'll see it later. I will go it like that, but yeah. So basically like you are transforming like your uh, Z field into a X field. Here like this is, this is not our a special randomness field. So that's basically, this is the, uh, the, the PCK is basically like the basis function and uh, of uh, our location times uh, some weight. And I will, I will go into that later. And we can approximate that as a normal, uh, yeah, the, the, this is the weight since it's, I have write it here. Uh, and I will explain that later with uh, the, um, a bit later. I will come back to that a bit later with like, a, I think the drawing out. And we can basically approximate that as a joint normal distribution, or it's a joint normal distribution that take zero as a mean. And instead, the variance is like a covariance uh, stuff. And these two parameters is just what you use uh, into the, uh, if I go back uh, into the Martin covariance, well, a bit below. Yeah, why is it here? K is here. And the V is here. So this is like this, you can like basically draw, uh, it's not exactly V, it's tall, but you can like, uh, they are related to each other. That's why uh, they go well together. In fact, I have not understood everything about it, but what I have understood is like, by doing that, you limit the number of parameters and you simplify your calculation. And you simplify also like the the uh, the prior you are using 
than the reduced uh, posterior distribution you are producing. It's easier and you can use inlet to do that. Okay, uh, let's jump into one example. Uh, so the data came from another package. We use just use the package for the data. Uh, the package is the package that uh, if you want to do some geostatistics, it's a famous geo package, uh, but it's a bit harder than the GSTAT package. The GSTAT package is developed by Edstaff Benzma, which is famous because like this is also like the main developer from SF. Uh, I, I a lot of time I just use GSTAT, but if you want to use like if you need more stuff from geostatistics, geo R package. Uh, is a very good package. I remember using it for my PhD long time ago. Uh, that's it. Uh, so here we, we, we are just gonna use it for this data set. I just changed a bit like the, the script because I, I prefer like sending the data into, instead of uh, having the data into the call of the chip. But that's basically it. So you have like, uh, it's a region in Brazil uh where you have like 143 station that's measured the uh, rainfall uh, there is no secret into this gg code uh, the plot uh, call i think you i do not think it's that so the model what we are gonna use is that we're gonna select like, the rainfall follow normal distribution of soft mean and some standard uh deviation and uh it will go over every station then what we're gonna do it's why like we're still building a new article model we'll select the mean will be some intercept plus uh the special effects and we'll see how we define the special effects and the special effect will be like a matan uh we'll use a zero mean gaussian process with a matan covariant function what we have seen like later this joint distribution here We'll use that. Okay, if I understand correctly. Uh, so I was kind of dubious, but I have followed the exercise because I think there are degrees. If you check like the Parna uh, object, you have like uh, it's a list, and you have like uh, a chord that's uh, contain like the latitude, longitude, and I think there are degrees. So. I think I, I will have converted to like a, a projected approach before calculating distances because degree can change in the space, but the book do it that way. So um, that's it. Okay. So how are we gonna do that? So first we have just, we just check the distance between every point and we do a summary. So some points are very close. And the median distance between two points is 200, uh, 201.2, but I do not guess too much what it is. Uh, I, maybe kilometers, I don't know. I hope it's kilometers, but I think it's some kind of, anyway, it works. Uh, so with that in mind, that will help us uh, drawing or transforming our continued space into some uh, bunch of triangles, which is called a mesh of triangles. So for that, INLA provides you a function which is called mesh 2 ds That takes uh, a location, which is the coordinate of our points. That's why like if you are using SF, keep in mind that this should be like a data frame with latitude and longitude. Uh, an offset, which will define um, how far uh, are we going to go from the borders? So uh, the inner borders uh, is 50. So it's basically like the points are like a, uh, are 50 meters, I, I, 50 units of the coordinates degree you are using away inside of the inner borders and outside of the outer borders, uh, it's going to go farther. Whatever. I played with that a lot. It's funny. I encourage you to play. <laughs> Uh, cutoff is one. It's just like if you are very small points that are very close, they will try to draw like very small triangle and you will have plenty of triangle and then the computation will be slow. And you want to avoid that. And I, 
it will also like the computation will be slow and uh, it will maybe introduce some, I think some kind of weird stuff on the interpolation you're gonna produce. Uh, and then the max edge, this is the edge of the triangle you are gonna generate. On the outer border, there are 60 units of the co uh, uh, coordinate reference system. And inside there are 30, that's why they are smaller. Also, I encourage you playing with that first one. I mean, I like doing that. But... And you can plot it and plot the point. Uh, you can check the object. It's a fairly complicated object. That's why I've just listed uh, the max level equal one. But it contains the n, which is basically the number of triangles. Uh, but it have like, you know, you have the segment, the graph, the et cetera, the coordinate is here, it's new. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, it's way more nested that it look like here if you do not like. Uh... Once this was done, uh, well, on this one, like we didn't choose boundary. Boundary is another argument you can use if you have like, you know, a well-known uh, shape. Yeah, like just to show us, like you can also use a non-convex uh, function that will draw this line. And we, we set setting up like this is the, so we generate like these boundaries as using another uh, inner function that generate a uh, convex L and non null one. This is the blue stuff. It changed a bit the form. And, and then this is the same parameters. Okay. I do not have lose you. So uh, now we need like to implement the special uh, SPG e model I never uh, the so we are gonna use this uh, mesh data and we need to specify uh, the alpha which is the smoothness if I remember correctly which is equal to t d the number of dimension and uh, yeah usually we use alpha equal two because D will be two, it will be one, and that will be V. I do not remember, I have to do it by hand. So alpha is equal to V is equal to that. It will be like uh, two on two. That will be V, V will, 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 will be equal to one. Uh, because we just have two dimension. And constraint, I have not understand exactly what it means, but it's supposed to be there. So here, this is it. We are like uh, doing the covariance matter, matter uh, the, the matter and covariance on all of these small uh, points on the triangle. Uh, uh, here we are going to generate an indexes with all the, the nodes uh, that we will not end. And it's because like we are using the sit location. Remember, like in all our formula. This is, you can put Bill, Bob, or whatever, just, just like to be uh, correct with the notation. Oh, Lisa. Well. Now uh, we are going to build a matrix which contain N rows for N location. Uh, oh, yeah, it's here. So uh, I have like make an error. I will like maybe show you like uh, uh, geospatial. Did you see my uh, file? Yeah, go ahead, two eights. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go like to the to show you that. Yeah. It's the triangle here. Now it's supposed to be, I have probably like mess mess up the link. Here. So here, like you have like a, a location, and the location here, yeah, it's not on the it's in the middle of uh let's say like two uh triangle. Or the, like node or uh, edge, node, node of triangle, then the, the special phenomenon on the Z will be equal to uh, the, the weighted distance between every, every places. And if it's on, for example, if S is on Z3, uh, it will basically take the value of Z, Z3, okay? So basically what we are doing here, it's like we are gonna do build a matrix with every location on the row, and then uh, it will it will it will have like on the colon we'll have every vertex of the triangle. Usually, uh, the row will look like a bunch of zero 
And then, because like the, the, the point is usually closer than, uh, it's usually like, uh, by definition, close to three uh, nodes of a triangle, because this is how we build the Delaunay. And uh, then it will equal like what we call the basis function. Remember uh, here, uh, weighted the, the, the distances. Is it good? Do you understand it? So uh, let's go like in the book, maybe like the example makes sense. So here you see like this line, like the, this line, the first, uh, the point is exactly on one, uh, one, um, one node. Here it's between like uh, two, maybe, maybe two nodes, three nodes, sorry. So it's equal like the relation, the, 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 so the inverse distances between the weighted distances, sorry, between like the, the place where it was between these two nodes. And this is the same for every, every step. Every, so this is why like uh, if you do like, um, so we take the indexes, we generate the projection matrix. So the indexes is just to we already discussed that. So we generate the the projection matrix. Uh, and if you check like the row sum, it will equal 143 because we just have uh, 143 station, which makes sense because like it's it's by design defined and done that. Then uh, we need to build a grid uh, here. If we check against the distances uh what is it here it makes sense to build a 50 a grid by 50 by 50. i think so like it was you know, 50 by 50 is convenient it does not make much point i mean you could also add 100 by 100 also but it less it's it's more it's less smooth um so to build that this is pretty simple like you just get the bonding box of the borders of the parna region uh, and then we increased of one uh, in, in every size. So when you are going down, it's minus one to increase. And when you're going to up, it's plus one. Okay. And then uh, you are like expand grid. So you calculate every value uh, of it and you convert that as a matrix of X times Y to have like uh, a small grid. So you have a square grid and then uh, you cut it. You cut it with the boundary. So I do not know like this point in polygon. It's a whole function from SP, uh, but you can use it also. Uh, I have a, I was too lazy to do it in SF. So, but you can probably use SF to do the same. And that's it. You have like a, a, a grid. Uh, then uh, we are gonna build. Uh, so. We are going to build a, a new projection matrix, will be M, which will be empty. And this projection matrix will be the same. So every node of the triangle times uh, every triangle, something like that, if I'm correct. No, probably not. Anyway. Uh, so now uh, we are going to build what they call a stack. I do not understand everything. This is the part where, like the software, it's kind of be less transparent. So we are going to build two stack. I understand why we are going to build two stack, but I do not understand what exactly what it is. Uh, one stack will be for estimation and one stack will be for prediction. So I guess that. Uh, so this is, I assume we can change the name of it. Uh, on the first one, the estimation, what will take? The data need to be like the data. So we're going to just, but it needs to be a list. So we are good and we call it Y. I do not know why. I, I, I haven't played with it enough to know if it's important, but it's basically like the rainfall data. Then uh, A will be like the list of one into the projection matrix. So a list of stuff. And the effect we want, according to our model, are our uh, beta zero, which is the intercept. Uh, which is just the value of uh, the indexes of every uh, n row of our coordinate and the indexes. This is we want like the, this is the spatial effects. 
And then this is the prediction stack, which is B, which will be empty. This is see like the list of y equal n a, and we will fill it with the with the all nodes. Then we we just add them together. I do not know what the inline stack function do, but this is uh, like I'm like cooking with products that I do not understand. <laughs> but okay. Then a formula, which is pretty straightforward of what we have seen before. So our formula is y. That will be equal zero plus b zero, meaning like we do not care about the intercept of, um, for no intercept uh, between a special effects. And uh, we use the f function classic of inla, meaning like we want the s, um, so the our special effects called s. And the model we use is the spatial differential, uh, spatial SPDA stuff. Okay. Then we call uh, this in call also is not is, is less clear than what we have done before, I feel. So we call the formula, same as before. Uh, instead of data, no, we are calling the stack. And we are calling it with stack data. So we are calling the full stack, which has prediction and estimation inside of it, uh, in the data with inline stack data. So it has both the data and the empty grid. The control of predictor is the same. Like we want to come uh, to have like the computing tree give us like um, uh, the estimate of it, not just like the prediction. And uh, this is the A part, which I'm still unclear about it. That will uh, that you need to also input. Uh, see, this is the in last stack. That's A, and not the in last stack data. And you still input the the stack full. I assume it did that. The R element here that stack both of our grid we generate before. Okay. Then we call it. I have some warning. Uh, doesn't seem important. It worked. <laughs> Then, uh, okay, so now we have like, a, we finally have the results. Uh, what we want to do now is regenerated the indexes, uh, which will bring us the indexes of every node. And we want the prediction. So if we tag estimate, we'll have the estimate. If you tag Fred, you will have est, um, estimate. That's why like, if you change here, I think, I'm not sure if you change here, you need to change it here also. And then you want just the data. Uh, and then you are collecting uh, these indexes will allow you to, uh, inside the result summary fitted value, to get the index. So you will get this, the good value for mean and the two quartile. So the results uh, object is a fairly complicated one. And at the end, you just want uh, the mean and the quantile. And you want it to be the same. You want to collect the data at the same time. I think like on this part, uh, some like work, engineering work could make it simpler for the user, in my honest opinion. <laughs> but this is how you do it. Uh, so it's also pedagogical, I guess. OK. So now we have like the brain mean, the, the predictive mean for uh, a bunch of our uh, nodes of, uh, yeah, small nodes of. Um, uh, a triangle, uh, and you are basically like uh, binding them. So you are basically like building them in the tidy data frame. So this this is perfect for the tidy 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 fan. We we'll basically like have the boss coordinates, then a variable that uh, that can take like thread mean, thread uh, low lower, and thread upper low, uh, lower, uh, and then the value and so three, uh, four columns, sorry, my bad. And then we can map it and use also like the coplot. I think, I do not think I have loaded it. Oh, just not the wrap. So I was a bit scared like when I was doing it because on my screen, it looked at different, but the resolution here uh, is the same that the book. I encourage you doing it on a, a big screen and a big resolution because you will see it's more granulate that it look like here. Yeah, it's kind of look like, you know, continuous, but it's more like a clustered. You know, like we kind of, if you go back, you kind of see like this small uh, here, like you will see like 
a bit difference in this area, which makes sense. Okay. Then we can just use to if here like we have like just the, the prediction of uh, rainfall, so it's give us the prediction the mid, the upper, lower, lower, lower. It's super quick, um, but we can just be interested in the effect, the special effects. So they show us how to do it. Uh, I'm a bit uh, late, so I will try to go fast. Uh, what was difficult here? Uh, yeah, yeah, just an example. Like, just if you want to, if you are interested in some location, you can do it. But uh, yeah, if uh, I have slightly different than her on my uh, stuff, I also got a warning. I do not remember one. Uh, uh, no, I, I do not remember. Somewhere I got a deprecation warning on some of the function. I don't. I think it's on the matrix one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I just mentioned it to you. So I hope they update the software. Uh, which one was it? The matrix. The one that calculated the matrix is. Uh, where is it? Not here. Yes, I think. Prediction data, prediction matrix, yes. Here on this one, I had a, a warning because like the uh, an underlying function was deprecated. So that, you know, I feel like the in-lab package is kind of still in work. Uh, okay. Uh, and that's it. So now you can like, uh, and what is interesting is like you can, uh, range is it with what was defined range? Oh, it's a range function. Okay, so uh, we are gonna take the location. We want it to be applied on the. I think apply two is on the column. Yeah, and uh, then we are gonna use two function projectors and uh, mesh to project it. And we are gonna project just the spatial effect. So we know like where we have spatial effect and where we do not have. And we also have uh, the standard deviation of the spatial effect. Obviously, farther we are from points, uh, farther we have a, st uh, um, we have a, farther we are from, farther the incertitude, uncertainty, the standard deviation is strong. But uh, even like you see, like we have some poor, uh, some points on the north, uh, yeah, north east. They have less variation. The, the effect, the special effect, is less is 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 lower. Is it's not even lower. It's more like uh, it's another side. So you have a positive effect on this region, and more you go to the coast, apparently the effect is negative. So I do not explain it. I'm not a, a specialist, but it's a, I feel it's interesting to, to look at if you know what you are looking at. I haven't uh, tried the uh, next example, but it's a very quick example that show you like you can basically use the same techniques. Um, but instead of having like a, a densities, you have like something that's binary and you use a logic to a logic link to convert it. So that was it. <laughs> so if you have like some question, remark. Uh, no. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a I feel it was a difficult chapters and not everything is clear on my head, but at least I can reproduce it now. Yeah, yeah. I think more, more example would be, will be useful. More example, more case studies, and the application of this uh, um, onto other um, yeah say, yeah. To this Next case two chapters to are just case yeah. studies. Okay, great. So we'll we'll be able to play with it, and after no more modelization, just shiny. So we are we are we just have two weeks of uh, Illa, and then like we we play a bit with shiny and and yeah. and flex dashboard, which is and, fun. Uh, and it's Christmas time. And it's Christmas and, time. Uh, and New Year's Eve. So, so we'll I'm, take I'm, a bit. Yeah. I think I'm progressing. 
slowly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have still a lot of lot, lot of stuff to progress. Like this book, like Bayesian modeling of spatial temporal data. I don't know if you said it. Yes, yeah, I'm here. Which one? Uh, uh, I will put the link on the chat. Help me, uh, help me a bit to understand uh, everything. Yeah, because I was I was reading a book. I thought it is the same. Which one is that? Bayesian modeling of spatial temporal data with R. Ah, okay, that, that's nice. And mm -hmm. the chapter two, the chapter two is just like all the terms defined mm -hmm. and okay. the relationship between them. That's it. Yeah. And yeah, so it was like, uh, that's why like last week, I, I have these books and I just have my notes on it and I needed to review them. But yeah, I mean, I, I also still feel like, uh, um, yeah, Frederica, go ahead. Let's see who, who is next week also. Let's do that. I think like for me, just a good introduction of Illa, but I, I, do, not, I do not think I will understand like uh, it's exactly. I still miss, like you know, the whole uh, workflow we have done with the um, with the bias rule, you know, and uh, the setting of the prior, the et cetera, et cetera. I, I I miss that. I do not know what you think about that, but so it's you, Frederica. Exactly. Yeah, okay. and, I, and I, yeah, I, and I booked for uh, and I put myself down for the shiny introduction as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Just I wanted to say that there's some uh, uh, um, overlap with the Christmas holidays for two of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, maybe we want to move yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the twenty fourth and the thirty first is a bit like busy, busy time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Both dates are on the. So sure. Uh, let's go. Like even like uh, another no another time no. Let's put the no meeting here. I'm terrible with spreadsheets. Okay, but yeah, yeah, sure. Oh no. <laughs> they are evil. I think uh, I have to join on another meeting. Yeah, now. sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay. uh, with but yeah, we're good. Uh, we, uh, we will not work on Christmas Eve and on the. Uh, and on the, um, sorry, on the, um, on New Year's. Uh, is it good? Yeah, yeah, the first of when, uh, I will do that, I will do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, okay, so. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you. No, no, thank you too. And uh, well, maybe see you soon, uh, Federica, on the book club. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.